Hey Pixels, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to code an animated image grid layout that will look awesome on any portfolio website. This is a spin on one of my most loved tutorials, Responsive Animated Image Grid. In this tutorial, we're going to use HTML and the latest in CSS, which includes the infamous CSS Grid. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to Excel Pixel for more great videos on design code and tech. Also, be sure to hit the notifications icon so you'll be first to know when a new video drops. Have you done it yet? I hope so. Now, let's jump right in. First, create a section with the class name XOP section. Within this section, create a div with the class name XOP wrapper and another div with the class name XOP container. Both divs will help position and contain our animated portfolio image grid. Now, we're going to code our images within the image grid. First, we're going to use the anchor tag with the class name project and add a hyperlink placeholder by using the hash symbol. Within the figure tag, we're going to add our first image. Be sure to use the alt attribute to make your image accessible. Below the image, we're going to add a fig caption, a div, and then we're going to add a title for the project in paragraph with the class CTA. This paragraph will be revealed when a user hovers over a portfolio image. Now that we have the basic structure of our image, all you need to do is duplicate the entire project code snippet six more times and update the images, alt text, and title accordingly. That's all for the HTML. Now let's head on over to our CSS file. All the magic happens in our CSS file. As you can see, I've already imported my Google font for this project. Feel free to use any font you like. I like to code mobile first. So the following styles will be what our image grid looks like on a smaller screen and then how it looks on a larger browser window. First, I'm going to use a light background color. I've also added some basic styles to the main section. In our HTML, we wrap the portfolio images within a class named project. I want to turn our anchor into a block level element. So I'm just going to use the display block declaration and add a margin to the top and bottom of each project in our grid. I also removed some of the default margin and padding from the figure tag. Now for the next few CSS rules, I will be adding some basic styles to the project image, big caption, H3, and CTA. For the project image, note that I'm using the declaration object fit cover. This is perfect because it's going to preserve the aspect ratio of the image.
For the CTA, I've also added a font awesome icon just to further emphasize that there's more to see when the user clicks the image. Now that we've styled our grid for smaller screens, we can now add some styles for larger screens. First, we're going to add an at media rule for screens larger than 960 pixels. Within this rule, let's first center our wrapper and give it a max width of 960 pixels. Now, we're going to select our main container and use the amazing CSS grid. First, I'm going to use the display grid declaration. Then, I'm going to use the grid template columns property. I want to use the repeat function to repeat our one fraction value three times. I'm also going to add a grid gap that's 16 pixels. Our grid is looking great, but you might notice that it's not even. After all, we have seven grid items to display our photos. To make our odd numbered grid even, we're going to select the first image in our grid and style it so that it takes up the full width of our grid. To do this, I'm going to select the projects and use the nth child declaration. This is going to select the first image in our grid. Then we'll make the grid column start at the first column and then span it to the third column, which will make the first photo in our image full width. Now that we've established the grid, we can style our project and project figure. For the project figure, we're going to set position, relative, and overflow hidden. We want all elements to be relative to the container and any overflow to be within the project container. We're also going to set the position of our figure images to relative, bring it to the front, and add a 0.4 second transition. When we hover over an image, we want it to raise just high enough so that it sits on top of the fig caption. We'll do this using the transform translate Y property. Finally, we're going to add a few styles to the fig caption, notably positioning it within the project container and adding some padding. That's how you code this really cool animated image grid using HTML and CSS. You've also learned how easy it is to make a grid using CSS grid layout. Want to share your work? Use the hashtag exopixelperfect to be featured on exopixel.com. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe to Exopixel for more great videos on design code and tech. I'll see you in the next video.